if somebody visits my website right now, they're going to start to see me on YouTube. They're going to start to see me on pretty much any website that has, you know, Google display ads. If they search my name, they're going to see Google search. If they go on Instagram, they're going to see me there. You're pretty much going to see me everywhere. You know, I'm going to follow you around for forever. This is The Fighting Entrepreneur, the podcast dedicated to entrepreneurs looking to change the world. Learn how to start, build, and scale a business in today's highly competitive business environment. Here's your host, The Fighting Entrepreneur, Anik Singhal. What's up, you crazy fighting entrepreneurs? Welcome back to another episode of The Fighting Entrepreneur. It's your favorite person in the whole wide world, Anik Singhal, back. Listen, we have a powerful episode today. And it's the most selfish episode I've done yet out of the last hundred and so many episodes that we've done. It is a topic that I just have not been able to do well in. My team has not been able to do well with it. But everybody and their grandmothers talk about just how powerful this is. What is that? Retargeting ads. All right. How to do retargeting ads. We're going to talk about this today with one of the premier foremost experts in paid advertising that I've had a luxury of working with, of talking to you, of consulting with, of getting to know and of knowing him for a long time. He's the first guest ever to be re-invited for another episode at the Fighting Entrepreneur. I got to say that's quite that's quite like we should we should have like a like a trophy for that. Uh, Mike Buntempo, everybody, he was here with us, episode 44 and 45. Go check it out. He revealed exactly how he built his agency. We got such amazing feedback from that episode. He revealed all how to build an agency and start creating, like literally build a seven figure agency with zero ad spend, how to get, tra uh, how to get clients right from your personal Facebook profile. That's what he talked about on episode 44 and 45. That's not what we're talking about today. But before I bring him on board and before I talk about the amazing topic for today, I gotta ask you something. Are you a member of Learn Nation yet or not? Come on, lurn.com. Get over there. It's absolutely free. Join our entrepreneurial community. The time I'm filming this, we've crossed 317,000 users and students in that platform. We are going to build up to 10 million entrepreneurs worldwide in this one platform, connected and helping one another. Because what do I always say? If you want to change the world, you want to cure hunger, you want to bring education to every child, you want to solve health problems, cure disease. It ain't going to be the government. It's going to be us entrepreneurs. And if we stick together and work together, man, we will disrupt every industry out there. And that's why we built Learn, the transformational home for entrepreneurs. So go to lurn.com, get your absolutely free membership for life. There's lots of amazing courses in there, including free courses and some paid courses, some which are like $2. And hey, you know what? Our guest that we're talking to today, he's going to be published inside of Learn Nation soon as well. So how cool is that? So without further ado, Mr. Mike Bontempo, thank you for coming back and giving us your precious time, man. It is an honor and a pleasure to have you with us today. Thanks for having me, man. You know, I had a great time on the, you know, the first couple podcasts and, you know, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely appreciate you having me back. Yeah, man, I'm excited to have you back. Uh, just seeing your growth has been so tremendous. Uh, you continue to just carve yourself as the guy, man. I mean, when it comes to advertising and and paid advertising and and what I want to really echo to everybody is he's out there working with over 25 active clients, some of which are spending multiple six figures a month on advertising. So the level of knowledge in his head isn't just what we would have at Learn, which is from running our campaigns. This guy's doing this for 25 other people. So everything that comes out of him is super tested, super scalable. If he had an idea, he's not just giving it to us. He tested it on one client, then two, then three, then four, then five, then 10. And so by that point, you can take it to the bank. And that's what I love about having Mike back. But Mike, it, nothing uh, can be said before we do the tradition here at The Fighting Entrepreneur. So if you don't mind raising your right hand and repeating after me. I'm Mike Bontempo. I'm Mike Bontempo. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To tell the truth and nothing but the truth. To tell the truth and nothing but the truth. And to reveal all my retargeting secrets and to reveal all my retargeting secrets. Bam, love it, man. Thank you so much again for being with us. Um, you know what, I'm gonna hop right into round number one. So, um, all right, so round number one, Mike, tell us your story for anyone. There's so many new listeners we have since you and I were here together at the Learn Center and we filmed episode 44 and 45. So many new people are listening. Who are you, Mike? Give us your story. How the heck did you become this massive expert in the world of paid and investment traffic, like I like to call it. Um, and you're still so young, but yet you've become a prominent expert in the space. So tell us more. 
Um, so, you know, I started back in like 2009, I was still in high school. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a big, uh, sports car collector. As, as you can see, I got some cards in the back. Um, so when I was younger, I used to send out, uh, cards to go get autographed, you know, to my favorite baseball players, football players, all of that. And I used to send them, uh, when, when I would get duplicates, I used to sell them on a site called mikesautographs.com. And, you know, I'd make a couple bucks, you know, 50 bucks a week, whatever. Uh, and then from there, I just wanted to learn how can I sell more autographs? So that led me to the warrior forum that led me to Facebook ads. Uh, you know, so, you know, I started making some money there and then I ended up going to uh, college to play baseball. I went to Virginia Wesleyan after one semester, I literally dropped out. This was in 2010. And I was like, you know what? I want to go after, you know, marketing online, uh, full time, you know, I argued with my dad for a couple months and, you know, fi fi finally I was like, listen, dad, I'm not even going to class. You know, I'm, I'm running ads online. And, uh, from there, you know, I came home, I struggled for a little bit. It wasn't until like five or six months down the line, I was actually at an event with Russell Brunson and I met a kid named Anthony Mink. Shout out to him. Um, he, he, he definitely changed my life and I, I don't even think he really knows to, to the extent, but, um, he went over a method with, with fan pages and essentially how to get, uh, one penny likes. And like he, he went over in the event, I ran back to my hotel room and, you know, I set up a page called Steelers fans and did exactly what he said. Next thing you know, I was getting one page, one, one penny likes. I, and I started really just building that page. You know, you're spending, you know, um, a dollar, you're getting a hundred people on, on your fan page. You're spending ten ten dollars you're getting a thousand. And I would start to post CPA offers. So, you know, a CPA offers cost per acquisition. And there was a specific offer called Scholarship Zone. They would pay me $6 per lead. Um, and from there, I went from making like nothing to like $500 a day profit. And then by the time I was 21, I made my first million dollars. And that wow. was in 2000. That was in 2013. Um, you know, and we were running Facebook ads to pages. We were running Facebook ads in the newsfeed. Um, so I've been running, you know, advertising. It's, it's coming up on, well, it's pretty much 10 years I've been, I've been running, you know, I ran a little bit of advertising in 2009, but mainly I went full time in 2010 and, you know, I've spent millions upon million. Well, I'm pro probably over like 26, $27 million spent on ads now. Wow. That's amazing. And, you know, one of the things I'll just kind of shortcut and tell everybody, um, and I really do recommend everyone to go back and listen to episode 44 and 45 with him, uh, especially 44 where he broke down the strategy. But I love how I think the question I had asked you on episode 44 was, how did you even become an agency? And, and you fell into this. This wasn't like you sat down one day and made a business plan for it. You were just doing ads for yourself so well. Someone comes along and says, I'll pay you to do this for me. And you thought, all right, sure, why not? And then you did so well, someone else comes along and says, I'll pay you to do mine. And you're like, uh, okay, sure. And now all of a sudden you you got 25 plus clients. You are constantly referred to as one of the people to go to for ad questions. And, um, you know, candidly, I, I reached out to him and I said, hey, I want to learn about retargeting ads. But rather than do a free hour of his time, I just said, let's get you on the podcast. And so I highly recommend everybody. We'll talk about the links and everything at the end of this uh, episode. But you should definitely connect with him if you've got something you want him to run for you. Uh, the other thing I can just tell you right now is if you want to grab the show notes and jump ahead and get that link, go to onicpodcast.com, A N. I K podcast P O D C A S T dot com where we have all of our show notes. Um, you know what, Mike, man, I want to jump right in. If you're ready, uh, I'm going to move into round number two. You ready to get into this and start talking about some retargeting? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Round number two, retargeting ads. Mike, what the heck is it? Let's just talk super high level. We're going to grate down into the nit and gritty, but what is a retargeting ad? And uh, why do you love them so much? Well, essentially, when somebody visits your site, when you have your pixel set up, so a Facebook pixel, a Google pixel, they cookie that user. Okay, so they cookie that user and you are able to follow them around on those platforms with ads. So, you know, if you have if you're doing Facebook, you're able to do, um, you know, the Facebook news feed. Instagram, and they also have the audience network. Essentially, the audience network is any sites that are using Facebook to monetize. So you'll see a lot of apps, you'll see a lot of just regular websites. 
Um, and you'll, you'll start to see those, those ads. Then with Google, the same thing applies. You know, you're able to run um, retargeting across Google Display, across Google Search, and YouTube. So, I mean, across Facebook and, and, and Google, you can essentially, you know, follow people around all, all over the internet and, you know, blanket most of that just, just on those two platforms because Google owns YouTube and because Facebook owns Instagram. Yeah. So basically, in theory, everybody, it's your warmest audiences. It's someone that has visited your website. It's someone that has clicked over. And now Facebook and Google say you can show them messaging and engross them. And Mike, you call it uh, omnipresence. Can you explain what that means and why you call it that? So omnipresence is essentially you blanketing the internet and being everywhere, being everywhere your, your prospect or your buyer is. So, you know, if, if somebody visits my website right now, they're going to start to see me on YouTube. They're going to start to see me on pretty much any website that has, um, you know, Google display ads that they're going to be on it. If they search my name, they're going to see Google search. Uh, I have ads there. If they go on Instagram, they're going to see me there. Um, you know, you're pretty much going to see me everywhere if you visit if if you visit my site and um, you know I'm going to follow you around for forever <laughs> forever. Um, I have a funny side story on that. So uh, I remember my dad came to me. This is like a year, two years ago, maybe even now. He came to me. So my dad he reads these Indian websites, uh, news websites. They're completely catered for the Indian audience. They are not meant to be in America at all. But he loves reading them because you get the raw news from the country. And he came to me one day and he goes, man, your company must be really blowing up. You must be doing amazing things. I'm like, why? Why are you so impressed all of a sudden? He said, I was on, you know, such and such website and your banners were all over it. They were promoting you like crazy. So you must be going so big in India now, too. And, and I was just laughing because obviously he goes to my website. He goes, he clicks the links in my emails and stuff. And I tried to explain to him that he was simply being retargeted. And that was only him really seeing those ads. It didn't mean everybody on those websites are seeing them. Obviously, it didn't make perfect sense to him, but so um, so it is the omnipresence impact is you got to remember the regular consumer, they, they don't understand that, right? So if all of a sudden they come to your website and they see you on CNN.com or, you know, weather.com or, you know, yahoo.com to them, they're like, wow, this guy's on, you know, CNN, like is like got an ad there, like he must be somebody like because they start seeing you everywhere. So it adds like it adds a tremendous amount of brand value to your business. But it's supposed to be, I mean, it's dirt cheap because it's not everybody on the website seeing it. It's just people that have visited your site. Um, I want to come talk about this in a second, about the, the way to create omnipresence and what all the platforms and types of ads you created on. But real quick, before we get there, Mike, if you had to take a long shot guess, what percentage of your sales or leads or your conversions, let's just say conversions, would you say come from retargeting versus your cold reach ads? Mm. Long shot. Let, let's let's say thirty five percent come come from retargeting, and and here's the thing: like retargeting is going to lower your cost per acquisition so so much. Like we have we have a client right now where we you know they do a million dollars a month off off of our ad spend. We spend anywhere from two fifty to three hundred thousand dollars a month for them. On if if you if you didn't have the retargeting in there, their CPA would probably sit around seventy two dollars for a new customer. With the retargeting, and and we we retarget everywhere. That they have our highest package, so we retarget Google Search, Google Display, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, literally everywhere. We drop that down from like seventy two, seventy three down to like fifty one. Wow! So it cuts wow. off. Was that um, like twenty, twenty one dollars, twenty two dollars? Um, yeah, almost and, and thirty. It's at, almost a thirty percent drop in acquisition cost. And that's that's at scale. You know, that's spending two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars a month. They're doing they're doing a million dollars a month off that. And um, so, you know, it, it adds more volume, but it really lowers your cost per acquisition. Like when you really have it going, uh, you know. Yeah, we, we wouldn't be able to we wouldn't be able to scale them so hard if we didn't really have our retargeting um, in sync. So question for you, uh, let's say right now we're not doing a lot of retargeting in the company because we just we've not been able to make it work. But after this episode today and after we go implement things, we're going to be doing it. Would it be a would it be a stretch of the arm to say 
we're losing out on 35% of sales by not doing retargeting properly, or at least 20 to 30% of our sales less because we're not doing retargeting? Yeah, definitely. Wow. All definitely. right. So for anyone right now who's listening and you're doing any kind of advertising, if you're not doing retargeting, that's Mike's on the record here just saying you're probably losing about 20, 20 to 30, 35% of your sales. Okay, Mike, you well, you um, went through this fairly quickly, so I want to slow down. I'm going to actually take some specific notes on this. Creating omnipresence. Let's get detailed. So on Facebook, you said, uh, I'm going to write these down. So you did, said Facebook, you said Google, uh, you mentioned Instagram. So let's talk about, is there any other overall platform that you like to do retargeting on? Um, there's, well, you have, you have YouTube as well. Okay. So let's just say that as a separate one. So you have Facebook, Instagram, Google, and YouTube. What about like LinkedIn, Snapchat, Pinterest? I don't know. There's so many of these out there nowadays. Um, we haven't focused on it to be honest with you. Okay. Um, you know, it, it could help. I don't think it's going to give you that much of a, of a boost. Okay. To be honest with you. Not me. even like Bing so. or any of those guys, right? So these are the four big ones that are going to drive all of it. If you had to put these in order, so someone's got to do this, but they're not, you know, they're not Mike. They don't have a full blown team. They're going to do this themselves. And they were like, I got to do one thing at a time. What was the order you would put them in? Which one should they do first? Facebook. Got it. Uh, and since Facebook owns Instagram, like, and, and here's another little, little thing. So like whenever, and most of the campaigns, like I would say 99.9% .9 of the campaigns we run as automatic placements. And that essentially allows you to um, hit everything that, that Facebook owns. So that's audience network, which is, you know, across all these websites and apps, that's Instagram, that's their newsfeed. That's literally everything that Facebook has. So when I say like Facebook, I'm talking about Instagram, I'm talking about their audience network. So like just when you roll it out, it has to be automatic placements. Um, you know, their AI is so smart. It used to be like you wouldn't do the audience network, but their AI is so smart now that even the audience network does well um, too. What so. about, okay, so that's great. And we're going to talk more about automatic placements and bidding and optimization, like all of that. We have a separate uh, round for that. But on Facebook, I love that you said audience network because you're right. Innately, it's been trained to all investment traffic people like don't ever do audience network but you, you've been pretty clear with me in the past too uh instagram on facebook you're hitting up newsfeed mobile desktop is there anything you turn off is there anything that doesn't work because on facebook they have insta articles they have this that i mean they have so many kinds of ads leave them all on no there there is one client where where we where we turned off automatic placements because it, it wasn't convert and it was a very long form, high ticket offer. It's um, like 16 fields. And we, we, we saw that it wasn't working on like instant oracles and audience network, just the feed was working. But other than that, man, like every, all those placements work like Facebook, Facebook hones in on the best placement and it runs. It. Okay. So even like right desktop and all of that, what about um, stories? Yeah stories do you have Everything. to create okay so let me ask this well okay you know what i don't want to get off topic so i'm going to make myself a note here uh so okay you had said facebook first instagram second because obviously it's kind of a matter of just clicking a button or not clicking a button what about the third um so it, it depends it depends on what what you're running so if you're running youtube cold then it would be YouTube. Um, but if you're not running YouTube cold, mm, I would probably say Google display. Okay. Because then you're going to really cover most of the internet with, with your ads. And, and here, here's the thing. So Go Google display works, but especially in a high ticket fashion, if you, if you're doing high ticket sales, when somebody gets on the phone with you and you're literally everywhere, like, just like you said with your dad, like, they're like, wow, this guy is literally everywhere. Like I can't get away from him. It, it just helps to close the deal so much better. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And, and in regards to that, like if you have, if you're running YouTube, then you could, you could, so if you're running YouTube cold, it really helps to run YouTube, um, people that viewed your ads, people that are subscribed to your channel, people that have visited your website and all that. So 
it really it really just depends like okay. if you have a youtube presence and you're running youtube ads youtube ads would be second if you don't have anything on youtube uh you know you're not you're not going to move it that much um got it yeah. okay awesome well that no that's super helpful and on google display so let's talk well let's talk about youtube for a second because we t we covered facebook and instagram as far as platforms on youtube you can do in stream you can do discovery uh, i think that's about it on youtube do you do both do you just do in stream just discovery what about that just just in stream we just haven't really played with discovery um we don't think the volumes there uh yeah i mean if you you probably could get some okay volume but in streams really killed it for us got it and on google display they've got literally like 20 different sizes that you could do how do you handle your retargeting ads do you do all of them do you shut it down do you just do do you do the smart they have something called smart display or something what do you do on google it's response so it's responsive display okay so that would be that would be the first one that you'd roll out and then um if you wanted to do your own banner ads there's a uh, uh, well, it's not software. It's like a platform called Banner Snack, and that allows you to create all of the banner ads you, you want to uh, pretty quickly. It's called so that would what? be Bannersnack.com. So b a n n e r snap.com. Snack. 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 S. Correct. Like eating. Correct. Correct. So, um, you know, I, we usually roll out responsive display first, and then after that we'll roll out banner snack, uh, ads and, you know, different types of, uh, like ug uglier type ads with, uh, the top 10, um, you know, placements. Awesome. All right. Well, shoot, that was, man, I love interviewing you. You're just like, boom, 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 straight to the point. We don't have to talk about flop and stories. You're, you're, the, you're the perfect guest for finding entrepreneur. Thanks, man. Thanks for giving it all up the way you do. I, I love, by the way, I just want to take a moment to commend you on your abundant style. Um, you just never, ever hold anything back. I've asked you questions that are very specific that could be technically even competitive with what you're doing, and you've just never given, given a crap. You just... Here's the information. And so really, really love you for that. All right. If you're cool, man, I'm going to move into round number three. Where we're going to talk about how to structure and what kind of audiences to go after. All right. So here we go. Round number three. Uh, we're going to talk about audiences. Now you talked, we, we covered this in round number two, a little bit, or round number one, where we talked about what is retargeting. We talked about the fact that it's page visitors, people that come to your website, you kind of follow them around. But I know that there's other kinds of audiences that you can do too. I wanna to first start with asking you the most basic setup. So again, put your hat on, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do two setups. We're gonna do basic setup and we're gonna do the advanced setup. So the basic setup is someone who's just starting this, they don't know how to do retargeting at all. What is the absolute must audiences that they need to go after? And then we'll go to the advanced one. Um. All website visitors, 30 days is an easy one. Okay. Um, video views, 95%. And this is, I'm talking about Facebook. So video views, 95% is essentially somebody that's watched 95% of your video ad. Um, engage with page, 30 days. Engage with post or ad, uh, 30 days. Uh, and then add to carts as well. So if somebody's add to cart, you want to send them, you know, obviously back. I mean, those are the, that's as basic as you could get those five ad sets. I think those would be, you know, the first five that would roll out. Got it. And notice how you said, I noticed how you said video views. So I just want to make sure everyone understands on Facebook, you can build audiences of people that have watched your video, like the, an ad that you're running. Um, what are, you can do all kinds of different ones, right? What are the, the, the limits they allow? There's like three seconds, 10 seconds. How does it go? Three seconds, 10 seconds, 25%, 50%, 75% and 95%. Got it. And have you found a big difference? So like, why not 75% versus 95% for the retargeting audience there? Well, if you're going basic, I mean, 95%, okay. they've watched most, most of your ad. Um, so have you ever seen like of the total views? Because I know Facebook says total views is like three second view, which is such nonsense. But so whenever they show like you had 3000 views on a video, it's 3000 people watch for three seconds. Do you have a rough idea? Like, have you ever tracked what percentage of that actually become 95% viewers? I know it'll be different by video, but is it should we expect like 1% of them to be, get there or like 10% or roughly? I mean, 
re really depends on the the length of the video. Okay. You know, if you have a if you have a 10 second video, you know, you're probably going to see around 70% are going to, you know, go through it. If you have, you know, a 2 minute video, maybe 20%. Oh, okay, still that so. high though. All right, got it. All right, so the basic setup was all website 30 days, video views 95%, engaged with either post or page 30 days, add to cart 30 post, days. Po post or add. Post engage or with, add, not yeah. page. Yeah, engage, engage with post or add. And then um, I, I believe I said engage with page 30 days. Got so it. Post or, hey, can you do that now? Can you? Because I you couldn't in a, you couldn't before. You could only do like page engagement. You couldn't get it down to a specific post engagement. Well, it's not a specific post engagement, but it's post or add. So if you go under your page, um, you know, in, you know, engage with page, then you have to click on the button and it'll have a drop down and you could do engage with post or add. And just a tip, that's that's like one of our best audiences. You can you can do it with people that have, you know, sent you a message. You can do it with um who is it? It's sent a message, uh engage with post, um clicked clicked um a call to action. Mm. You could do mm. a bunch you could do a bunch of them. There's a whole drop down. So like like the basic setup is engage with page, but if you click the engage with page, there's a drop down with like six other ones that you could do. Wow. Okay. Awesome. I did not know that. That's really cool. Okay. So let's talk advanced setup. Oh, wait, wait, before we move on there, we talked about Facebook. What about like, what's a basic setup look like elsewhere or Google, I guess so, I should say. So essentially it would, it would be, um, so let's, let's just say you're doing a uh, Google. So I build out all of the audiences in Google analytics. That's the first thing you need to link your Google analytics with, uh, with Google ads. So you would do, you know, all website visitors, 30 days. Um, you would, you would definitely do the add to carts. Um, if you're doing YouTube, you're going to want to do the same thing. So it'd be all website visitors, 30 days. You're going to want to do people that are subscribed to your channel. You're going to want to do people that have viewed an ad in the past 30 days. Um, when, and yeah, uh, I mean, no, then, then you could do, so here, here's, here's the, here's the good thing about Google. They allow you to see how each audience does in a campaign. Um, Facebook does not. So, so like you can throw in like 10 audiences into Google. So let's just say all website visitors, 14 days, all website visitors, 30 days. And, and, when you're setting up these audiences, you want to set them up, you know, like as a different audience, like it's, you know, 14 days, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days, 180 days. And you'll have all of those audiences. You can throw them all into one campaign and then you can go into the audiences tab in Google and see how each one does. And then just pause the ones that you, that, you know, are no good in Facebook. You cannot do that. You have to set up the ad sets. Um, you know, each, each ad sets a different audience. So it'd be like all website visitors, 30 days would be one ad set. Um, all website visitors, 60 days would be another ad set. Yeah. Unfortunately, wow. Facebook doesn't allow you to see you could, you could use like connect.io, but I don't use it. I just set up all of my ad sets separately. So each of those audiences is a separate ad set within one campaign. Correct. Got it. Um, okay. And then on Google, you had said viewed an ad. I know that they allow you to build video view audiences. Is there a certain amount that they have to view before you put them into the audience? I think it's just the, the, the 10 default. seconds, you know, Oh yeah. The default over, over the 10 second to, I thought to, um, on Google, isn't it 30 seconds was the default. It, they changed it to 10 seconds. Oh, tricky, tricky so, Google. All right. So now, so, so now you're getting charged for every 10 second view and not 30 seconds. They changed it like two months ago. Oh, wow. All right. Okay. That's good to know. Um, okay. So here is where I'm going to start asking some specific questions as to why I think we might not be doing well with this audience sizes. Like, you know, I have this theory, at least from what I've seen from Facebook that I know Facebook one time came out a year, year and a half ago and they were, they basically said, Hey, we want to be, we, we, we love retargeting. We love that because it's high click through rates. It's highly engaging to the users, blah, et cetera, et cetera. And I find that the smaller my audiences get, the more they charge me. They just gouge me on CPMs and um, my costs go up. Hence, this is why I felt like retargeting hasn't worked for me that well because 
my costs just go up. So yeah, the engagement goes up, but the costs go up so much higher. And the larger my audience is, the cheaper I pay. And retargeting innately, the audiences are usually not that big. What do you find as like the right size for a retargeting audience for it to do well? I'll, I'll be honest with you. I really don't look at size that, okay. that much. Um, I just look at the CPAs, like what, what is my target CPA? And then, and is that audience hitting it? So like, that's why we, we chop the audiences up so much. Um, like I've had, I've had campaigns where like, we'll do add to carts one day and maybe you're getting a hundred add to carts, you know, a day. And that's some of my best ad sets. And there's only a hundred people in that audience at any given time. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's a very small audience, but it's, it's highly engaged. Like these people just added to cart, you know, they're, they're good to go. So, yeah. okay. you know, and then when you get, when you get deeper, so like, I, I don't look, I don't look at it that way. Um, they're going to gouge you prices as you're smaller, but you have to look at it differently that you chop up your audiences more and which audiences are actually hitting your CPA goals. So, got it. you know, that, you know, all, it might be like all website visit, like in, in your case, like in your case, you have, you have more volume than most people. So like you could do like all website visitors, seven days, 14 days, 30 days, 60 days, and you can chop it up and then you can see which ones are actually hitting your, your CPA goals. And all of those would be separate ad sets, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. I, I, and, and here's the thing. I feel like a lot of people just want to do like, oh, let's just do 365 days and make the audience as big as possible. But you have to look at your recency, you know, as well. Like people that just joined, that just visited your website seven days ago are most likely going to be more valuable than somebody that, that visited sure. 180 days. Um, and that's, that's why I chopped them up. Okay. You know, they, they're, if you do, let's say you had two audiences, you're doing the seven day and the 14 day um on the website visitors when you set up the 14 day do you exclude the seven day so that it's only showing you just leave them all in there let it do its thing even yep. though you got double dipping going on on the audiences yeah I, okay. don't, I don't mess with that the only the only thing that i would exclude is is like purchases purchases or let's yeah okay so let's talk about an advanced setup now so you know me i got i got a i got a team behind this i got some knowledge behind this what would let's say i got one campaign um, I got, I'm tracking leads and I'm tracking sales. Walk me through my Facebook setup. That's a little bit more on the advanced side. And I know you're probably going to rapid fire, so I'm not even going to take notes. I'm just going to come back to it and watch it later. Now, what, 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 I'm not, I'm not sure what you mean by leads and say, like, you oh, sorry, I've setups. No, I just meant which custom audiences, which retargeting audiences would we set up for a company like mine if I want a bit of a more advanced setup? We went over the basic, right? All website visitors, 30 days, video views, 95% views, engage with post or ad, 30 days, and, and add to carts, and then engage with page, 30 days. I'm saying now let's take it one level up. You're doing it for me. What are some of the audiences that you would go after? Yeah, so it, it, you're just going to essentially chop those audiences up a lot a lot more. So here's how the campaign would look. It would be, let's just say RT dash, um, best, best two creatives and then, you know, purchases. So, and then you would have all of your ad sets. So I would do all website visitors, 14 days, all website visitors, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 120 days, 180 days. Then the next um, cluster would be video views, three seconds, 10 seconds, 25%, 50%, 75%, 95%. Then I would do engage with post um, or add 14, 30, 60, 90, um, 120, 180. Um, engage with page, same thing, 14, 30, 60, mm -hmm. 90. Uh, 120 engage with Instagram, same thing, 1430, uh, all of those. Then you could also do time spent. Um, so top 10% time spent and do all of those. You chop all of those up. Um, what was it to top, cards. top, sorry, top 10%. Yeah. Yeah. So you could do, and, and I haven't ran this in a little bit, but it's like top 10% time spent, top 25% time spent, top 50% time spent. Um, so you'd have all th that's going to be like another four ad sets. You would have add, add to carts. 
um, and add to carts depending on the volume you're doing. So if you have if you have a ton of add to carts, let's say you're getting 100 a day, that's going to be even um, shorter. So you would do one day, two day, three day, seven day, 14 day, 30 day, 60 day. And if you're doing volume there, you're going to want to, um, you know, the, 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 the one day add to cart is most likely going to be your best ad set. Got it. Wow. Awesome. Same, same at Google. Would we split it all up the same way? Bas basically what you did, I noticed is between the basic and the advanced setup, you just added more categories that are driven by the number of days. Same thing with Google then. Yeah. And, and the one thing I want to say too, and, and I just got done talking with a client about this. We always take our top two to three um, creatives, so our top three to two to three creatives, uh, top two to three ads, which means creatives, and we put them in all of these ad sets. There's so many people out there that think that they have to run an entirely different ad for the retargeting, which, which you can test, but we always like to test our best creatives right back into retargeting. It doesn't make sense to me that you have a ad that's you know beating your your target cpa by let's say you know 50 percent, and then you don't use it in retargeting just throw it throw it back in retargeting and it's going to kill it there as well okay so <clears throat> so i have a lot of ad questions for you and that's going to be round five but i got tons because this this was one thing you shared with me um months ago that kind of baffled me i was like wow because in our company we were we were creating brand new ads because we were trying to carry the narrative of where they were in their journey. Not only does it create a crap load of work, but it wasn't working for us. But before we go there, um, man, I got, I got the audience size stuff down. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. Thank you. It's super clear, super specific. Um, if you're good with it, I want to move into round number four. We're going to talk about bidding strategies, campaign structures, and, and all of that, which some of it you already got into. Um, all right. So round number four. Bidding, strategies, campaign structure. So my first question I wanna ask you is, uh, I recently went to this person's website and she's on the record for another podcast. So I'm trying to funnel hack her. I'm trying to understand how her business works. It's, it's pretty brilliant and I think it could be a huge division for learn. Something similar to it, obviously not competitive. Um, but I went to her website and I'm saying it was not even 30 seconds after which I went back to Facebook and boom. I have never seen an ad from her in my life. I had no idea who this person was. I was brought into her brand by a podcast interview she had done. Someone told me to listen to it, but it so it was definitely a retargeting ad that I got hit up with. And I'm telling you, man, I can't get off. Like my Facebook newsfeed is full with her and she's smart. She has like six different front ends. So there's six different courses that are front ends and I'm just kind of seeing her round robin through them. It's definitely got my attention. I want to ask you a question. How did she get in front of me so dang quickly? Is she doing manual bidding? Is that necessary? Is it important? Or is she, even if you just have it, an audience in Facebook will give it preference. Yeah. If you just have an audience in, I mean, it's going to, it's going to give you, going to give you preference. I mean, that, that happens to me all the time. I'll go and visit a website. And then the first ad I see on, on Facebook is literally them. So, and I'm I'm not a fan of manual bidding, um, okay. especially especially with the with the size that we're at and all the campaigns that we manage and the, and the people. You know, maybe if you spent some time on manual bidding, you know, you could you could get some good results. But my here's my theory: I would rather put that time in, into creatives. Let me get um you know three or four or five more creatives created are going to get a higher CTR than putting my time in a manual bidding and you know all these different things that are just not not going to move the needle that much in my opinion. Plus, you know, at, at you know when you're running a team and you have all these clients, all these campaigns, manual bidding's it's tough, man. There's there's a lot of different nuances to it. It's not worth it in my opinion if you're building, you know, you have all these different campaigns, all that stuff. So. No, I, I love it. Okay. So now let's talk about, so, okay. Automatic, let Facebook do what they do. So most likely I just saw her ad because she had an audience defined for it. And Facebook knows that that's probably going to be the warmest audience because it's a retargeting audience. They're smart enough to know that. Okay. What about optimization? So the very first thing Facebook asks you to do um, oh, but so manual bidding, just to close that up, same, same thing on Google. You just let them do their thing. You don't mess around with the manual stuff on Google as well. 
Yeah. So when we, when we first roll out a client that doesn't have any data in their Google account, we will bid, um, you know, usually, usually we'll bid, I don't know, 25 for 25 cents for cost per view for YouTube. Um, you know, 50 cents, a, a click for, for Google display. Um, but, but yeah. And, and, oh, so then essentially we'll move over to target CPA. Uh, after that, once they do get their, uh, once they do start getting volume and the, the pixel starts learning about them, but if they already have, um, stuff running at Google, we're just going to go straight to target CPA because Google already knows Got you it. Know, who, who to go after. Okay. So now let's come to my next question, which is on the Facebook side. The first thing you have to choose is your optimization goal. Uh, that's usually a conversion engagement traffic. Um, do you just stick to the conversion goal or do you start to change your goal now that you have a warmer audience? No, I, I usually, I would say 97% of the time I'm going to stay with, with the conversions. The only, the only time I usually I'll, I'll switch to traffic if it's a very small audience and I feel like I can get uh, a better reach there just, just, just for traffic. And I've done it a little bit in the past, but eh. I, I don't, I don't really, I usually just yeah. do conversion. Cause there, yeah, there's this theory out there. Some people that teach retargeting, they say, do, if you have a warm audience, like if you have your 95% video viewers, you know, they're hot. If you have your top 10% stayed at your website viewers, you know, they're hot. And so people will say, go after them by optimizing for traffic. Cause that inventory suddenly is dirt cheap on Facebook versus a conversion. And I, I've never tried it, so I was curious to see if you've ever tested that and seen that it is much cheaper. Yeah, if if it's here, here's the thing though: if the audience gets bigger, then you still want to go after your main thing. So if you want purchasers and you have a pool of let's say five thousand people, you don't want to get traffic. You want the person, you want the people convert. that are most likely to to become a, a yeah. purchase out of yeah. that five thousand. So. You know, if it's a small, small audience, then yeah. But at the end of the day, Facebook still knows they, they have a million data points on each person. They still know who's most likely to turn into a lead or, or a purchase. And I, you know, I want Facebook to do their job. Got it. All right. Awesome. Uh, we already talked about the fact that on Facebook, you use automatic placement. So you're definitely doing audience retargeting. You're doing all of the, all of that stuff. Let's talk about, um, how you so the campaign structure on Facebook and the campaign structure on Google, you got into this a little bit as well. Do you use so you'll have a campaign and you have multiple ad sets underneath the campaign on Facebook, you you might end up having a ton because you do the seven day, 14 day, 30 day, 60 day. Uh, do you do any CBO on this? Do you do any campaign based optimization? Or do you leave all these at ad set level? We'll do CBO with the top five ad sets. Um, we don't like to do too many because it, it just it becomes a cluster. Okay. And it just, it, it, we just haven't had success. We would rather take the top five ad sets and then throw them as CBO with, you know, let's say a hundred, 200 bucks a day. And then out of those top five, it'll find the absolute best ad set for that day. And got it. You know, go from there. So you've got essentially maybe two campaigns going on one campaign that's got all these audiences in it, but their ad set level. So they're being optimized on an ad set level. You pull your top five out, create another campaign. Now you let that one go campaign based optimization and put those top five in there. Do you turn those five off in the ad set level one, or do you let them both run? I let them both let run. Them both run. Here, here's, a, here's, a, here's another thing that we do. We will. So if a camp, if an ad set's doing very, very well, um, in there, we'll just dupe it out. We'll dupe it out a couple of times. So like, let's say we have, add to carts 30 days is doing very well. And like it's crushing CPAs. If we have, let, let's say the target CPA is 50 bucks. We want to make a sale for 50 bucks and we're getting sales for $17 for add to carts 30 days. And I know I got a big audience there. I'm going to dupe it out like three or four times. Got it. This is the, the exact same audience. What's the benefit of duping it out versus just increasing your ad budget? Um, if you go and double or triple your, your ad budget on that, it's going to throw the algorithm out of whack. Okay. So um, and we don't, you we, have to we go don't slow. really, yeah. And we don't like, uh, we really don't like touching working ad sets. You know, we could bump it maybe five, 10 bucks, um, you know, 10 to 20%. It's just a lot easier to dupe it out. Okay. Um, and not 
just you know you really shouldn't mess with working ad yeah. sets just anyway, let them do it just so everyone understands by duping it out he's basically saying you, you literally just duplicate the ad set and create another one that's exactly identical same ad creative same targeting same um audience everything and that's a faster way to scale stuff that's really killing it because if you want to scale the uh, budget of an ad that's working you're not supposed to go up more than 10 to 20 percent a day if that and so the quick way to like if you want to grab it and quick just just duplicate it out um which brings me to a, a question for you how much do you so 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 far just to summarize we have these two campaigns once ad set level the other campaign you're going to optimize by campaign based optimization take your top five dump them in there let everything run don't remove anything from anything how much is your budget ad set level so let's say i'm going in right now i'm going to set up all these audiences i got a ton of ad spend going on so i have big audiences what is your budget per ad set so if if it was for you it'd probably be let's say 30 bucks an ad set and okay. you're probably doing i don't know 25 ad sets 30 ad sets so about a thousand some, bucks a day like, yeah got it do you find that all of that gets spent for someone like me like it would get spent yeah all definitely. right and how uh, and then would you continue to scale do you like to scale those ads like is there a particular number like, let's say we started at 30 and it's killing it you'll go up what 10 percent a day or something until you find a threshold where it doesn't or do you like to say at some point i'm not going to scale this any further well no you would just dupe it out you would just take that you would just take that ad set and dupe it out you know a couple times and then okay. see see how those do and the ones that don't hit the the target cpa you pause and keep the ones that do Great. All right. And now on Google, let's move to campaign structure on Google. It's a little different because you said they allow you to just dump. So on Google, do you just dump it all into one thing and just give it the whole campaign a budget and then just let it go? Yeah. So how, how Google works is you're going to have your, your campaign, which would be, let's just say, um, what, what is it? It's uh, responsive display um you know dash rt then the the actual ad groups are going to be segmented by uh desktop mobile and tablet and those are going to be your ad groups and then you're going to have your ads in all of them and then you can have your audiences across all of those and 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 that's the thing google allows you to see which audiences are actually working mm. in in there so you could have let's say 30 audiences in there and then you you just see how how they're performing across you know, desktop, mobile, and tablet. And that and that's a big thing too. Like guys, you have to segment your your desktop, mobile, and tablet. If you're not, you know, Google's gonna hone in on one thing and a, a lot of the time it's just not it's I noticed not gonna work. You didn't say T V. Have you just or there's there's it's T V, right? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't I haven't tested it too much. Um in uh, I've I've heard it's getting better, but yeah. I mean at the end of the day if you're watching TV, you're not really going to click I, click on a link and go. I have tested it. So for a little tip, I was surprised. It actually works really it, well. I found it, volume to be a challenge, but I just, I let, I started doing with Google what you talk about doing with Facebook. I've started leaving all of them on and just letting them kind of find their, their, their place. But I, I like how you did the ad group separated by the targeting and then dump the audiences and all of them. Here's a question I have. And so whenever I do my Google ads, I've been really hardcore about audience. Like my campaigns are basically an audience each, uh, except for when I do keywords, like I'll dump a bunch of keywords into one audience. And the reason for that is I have found that Google will heavily favor your budget towards the bigger audiences. So if I put audience, bunch of audiences in there, I don't feel like they give equal love by any means to all of them. Uh, have you found that? And is that not a challenge for you if you're trying to get an even test across different audiences? Yeah, that, that, that could, that, that would make sense. Um, but, but I, what, what I will say is usually that audience ends up doing the best anyways, like okay. the, the bigger audience ends up being being our best so what i did yeah. find is as i start scaling so so basically for you then the scaling of the the budget is really at the campaign level right you're just upping that doll one dollar amount you're not controlling it at the individual level at all no okay no, i'm not campaign it's, level it, yeah it's campaign level and then you know i'm just you know a, a lot of the time desktop and tablet will lose to mobile Okay. Um, in, in our testing, you know, for the clients that we run and we'll, we'll just turn those off and then mobile will yeah. run. 
So the other tip I wanted to give you, man, um, it's just because I've been doing a lot of Google stuff this year. You'd be surprised at the level of volume there is in discovery. Um, I've been able to do some amazing stuff with discovery. The place where I'm facing a major challenge with discovery and we have intended to figure it out before the end of the year or at least early next year, tracking. Uh, for some, whatever reason, I've been on the phone with Google, I've stumped Google, even view through conversions does not work. It's not tracking through. So I'm having to create custom funnels attaching them to a custom discovery ad uh, to be able to get some idea. But then when I start stretching that discovery ad across various audiences, I got no idea. I got no idea which audience is pulling, but my ROI on the discovery ads has been insane. Uh, I, it's, you can take the same ad and I'm not, and they're not ads, right? So my discovery ads are quote unquote longer videos. So I'm not running them as in stream, but I've done really well with them. So I would be curious to see if you're trying to create omnipresence, it would be kind of cool to start hitting up people that are in those audiences on their discovery as well. So they just kind of see you all the time. Um, fun little test throwing that out there. Um, yeah, it's definitely something we'll test. So got it. So you set it up. at Oh yeah. What I was going to say is what I did find. So I used to get really irritated with the fact that with Google, if you give them one big budget and you have a ton of audiences, they don't spread the love evenly whatsoever. They give it to the biggest one, typically the first, but they do, you got to give Google time. So I want everyone to understand something I learned with Google. You got to be patient with Google. It's not like Facebook. You got to, like, you got to dance with them. So you got to give them a week or two. If it's not working, if that audience is not working well for you, they kind of figure it out. You can see them kind of start to trek down the other audiences and play. Um, and they will find the one that's working better. But I've also seen that if your audience is working really well, the campaign's doing well overall, as you start to increase your ad budget, they themselves start then to dip into those other audiences as well. It's just a time thing with Google. It's not nearly as, uh, you and, and Google does reward you for trusting them more. So the more you kind of let them play, they they do turn around and give a lot, lot more stuff. Uh, that's awesome, man. That's really all the questions I had on that. So if you're good with it, I'm gonna move into round number five and, and bring this thing home. So round number cool. five, um, the ads themselves. Let's talk about this because this has confused me. Here's what I thought. I thought when I first started trying to do retargeting a year and a half or two years ago, this made sense to me. So Mike, you, let's say, clicked one of my ads, landed on a page, I'm offering you a free book, free download, you know, sign up, give me your email address and you don't do it. You, you bounce, right? Like 70% of people, they bounce. I thought, well, the ad that you should see immediately is an ad that is different. That says, hold, me holding the book says, Hey, what's wrong with you? Why didn't you get this book? Blah, 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 blah. And then as we did that, I realized, well, you have all these audiences. What, what about you have the person that watched the video but never clicked? So am I gonna sit and make all kinds of different ads? It made sense, I'm like, oh, follow the narrative, you know, walk them down the journey. And it, 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 it became overwhelming. And quite honestly, it didn't really work that well. So do you do any of that? Or you just literally take your best creatives and dump them in the audience and let it go? Yeah, so we we always roll out our best creatives toward towards our retargeting like you know the top two top three we've always found those to do very very well what we will do is we will roll out new creatives to the retargeting but we we, we got to see how how it does like but we don't follow a path or whatever and like when you're managing that much media you, you, you can't set up like a whole, oh, they're, they're going to see this ad, then they're going to see this ad, and then they're going it, to, it's not going to make a difference. You, you want to go to bat with your absolute best ad creative. They already clicked on it. They already saw you. They know you. Go to bat again with your, act, your, your best ad creative. And like that would be the first thing that would roll out. And as those start to fatigue a little bit, then you can roll out some new ones. But like it, it, it's kind of like a, a cycle. Like, so you're going to have your best ad creatives in, in cold and those are going to run, those are going to run. And you're launching new, new ad creatives for cold all the time as well. You know, every week you might be launching new ad creatives. When you get new ad creatives that are working on cold, you're going to take those ads again and throw them in retargeting. So you know, it. it's kind of a self-perpetuating cycle, but yeah, I mean, no, so no narrative driven ads basically No. Okay. What about and, and this? That, Sorry, go ahead. That, that comes down to like, like scale as well. Like, you know, there's only so much time in the day. Like let, let's say you're a solopreneur and you know, you don't have much, that much stuff to do. I mean, yeah, maybe it's worth a test to, to kind of do it, 
But if you're spending, you know, two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand dollars a day, not not a day, a, a month on, on on a campaign, you're you're not going to really able to do this whole narrative and test all these these yeah. moving pieces. You want to throw your best creatives at your best audiences and and scale them up. Got it. So what what about another scenario where let's say we'll come up with a simple funnel. I've got ad goes to opt-in goes to eventually I want you to buy something. Would you create a separate suite of creative for the person who has opted in to get them to buy? So yep. now you exclude the opt-in people from all the other creative, which was asking them to opt in. Do you then create a separate set of creatives for them? So that is a bit narrative driving. Yeah. So, well, let, let me, let me say this. So we run a ton of webinars. Um, so people that have registered for a webinar, they've attended the webinar and they've saw the offer, then you're, you're going to make sure that they're actually going to go back to either the add to cart or to book a call. And that's going to be, let's say, you know, testimonial videos, a product walkthrough video, um, an FAQ video, a direct pitch video. You're not going to target that saw offer audience with the same, you know, Hey, go back to my webinar. What, you know, you're going to, you know, target them with, with different stuff to get them over the hump to actually go and book the call or to, um, you know, uh, check out or whatever. So you're not, you're not going to do that, but if you're just going straight purchase, then it's gotta be, you know, you're, or, or straight lead, you're still going to go with the best, um, the best creatives. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so if there's, if Sorry, I was just going to ask you, you went through an amazing list. I was hoping you could do it again. So we, we kind of understand how lead ads work. You show the thing, blah, 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 carry, create the narrative. I get it. But you do have, you have talked about this. You have a very specific suite of ads you want your clients to give you when they, for example, they have attended the webinar, watched the webinar, or they've seen my sales page. Go through that list again. You said testimonials. Uh, there was a bunch of stuff there. So you got testimonial videos, you have a product walkthrough video where essentially, so if you have a membership site, it would be you logging into your membership site and going through the modules. Hey, in module one, you're going to learn this module two, you're going to learn this blah, blah, blah. Kind of like, like a Billy Mays type style, like show them the actual product because especially in digital publishing, you know, people really don't know what's on the other side of of everything. So you gotta, you gotta show them what they're actually going to get. Then you have an FAQ video, you know, if you're doing phone sales or, you know, your customer, well, you probably have three to five questions that you're, that you're getting all the time, you know, pull out a whiteboard or, you know, record your screen and, and go through those questions and just answer them. It's, you know, it's three to five minutes long, um, does extremely well. And then the, finally you have uh, a direct pitch type video and just tell them, Hey, you know, Hey, I want, listen, you got to go book a call right now. Here's exactly what's going to happen when you book a call. We're going to go over all of your ad campaigns. We're going to show you the blind spots that you're missing, um, how to reduce your cost per lead. And, and listen, you got to do it right now because if not, X is going to happen. So. That is powerful stuff. I got to tell you right there, guys, that was it worth its weight in gold is what types of ads you should be retargeting with when it's time to take action, that final action, book a call, buy something. Um, it is different and it is a little bit narrative driven, but notice how it wasn't you asking them to do stuff necessarily. There's testimonials. Um, Mike, we've talked a lot about videos and video ads. Do you use image ads in, in your arsenal? Yeah. Yeah, do you have a do. preference or you just do both? We do both um, for, 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 you know, it, it really depends. So like when we're talking about a webinar, we really like what, uh, like webinars for people who actually saw the offer. We really like videos, like, you know, a testimonial video, um, you know, a product walkthrough, because especially when you're doing like high ticket, you're doing a five to a $10,000 thing on the phone. Like we've closed so many people that have literally watched a five minute testimonial. Um, and they're like, Hey, you know, I want to be just like Lance. Like, you know, I watched, I watched Lance's, uh, testimonial on Facebook. I want to be like Lance. How can I join your program mm. or, you know, a product walkthrough? Hey, listen, I saw everything that's in the, in the membership site. I really like it, you know, boom. So it, it really depends on the type of sale. If it's a lower front end, let's say it's a book offer, you know, images, um, of the book is fine. Um, you know, video, you could test both. Got but it. if you're going more high ticket, video video is really good. Video kills it. 
What about carousel ads? Any any off the beaten path type of ad, lead ads, carousel ads? Oh, there's so many options now. Anything else there you like? You could do a carousel ad. We like to do testimonial carousel ads. Um, you know, with like three or four great testimonials, just going over every everything. Um, and then you could you you could do like an image type carousel ad with you know kind of telling them a story um, with all the same design. Um, yeah, we don't do any lead ads at all unless it's just strictly a lead gen type of client. Okay. Um, yeah. Love it. I don't have any more questions, man. You've just been knocking them out. Um, I wish we had a live audience here. I feel like I would ask people if there was a question. Do you have one, poor book? No, not right now. Okay, awesome. Well, let's move into the final round, which is uh, we get to promote Mike because he's been so amazing for us. Round number six, Mr. Mike Buntempo, thank you. You have been so gracious as you always are and abundant and giving and teaching and I'm sure I'll have more and I am positive at this point, my friend, we will have you back again and again because of that very fact. But Mike, everyone listening right now is gonna want more Mike Bontempo in their life. Where do they go to talk to you, to learn from you, to make, give you money? Um, so if they actually want to work with my done for you agency where we run, you know, all your Facebook, your YouTube, Google ads, you could go to Mike forward slash B O and you'll be able to book a call with, uh, with my team and, you know, work with me, you know, where we actually run your ads and, and scale you up. Uh, if you want something lower, lower priced where, you know, you're, you, you don't really have everything set up and you have a lower ad budget, you could get my audio book. If you go to just mikebontempo.com, it'll redirect you to uh, the audiobook, and you know that's a dollar ninety nine, and uh, you know I go over my whole Facebook ads process. So to, pause uh, real quick. Can you spell your last name for us so that everyone has it? B U O N T E M P O. Bontempo. Somebody yeah, tells me you get asked that a lot. He was ready. He was like <laughs> right into the mic. Like is how you spell it. Okay. MikeBontempo.com forward slash B-O as in boy yep. office. That would be where you go to get your call or just go to MikeBontempo.com. Pick up his book, uh, his di uh, audio book. It is excellent. He's sold so many of them. You'll fall in love with the guy. And is there any social media outlet where they should stalk you a little bit to learn stuff from you? Yeah, so I have a group called the Paid Traffic Vault. You could you could look that up. Um, you could you could follow me on Facebook. I have I have too many friends currently. Uh, you could you could you could hit hit me up on Instagram. You know, I'm on, I'm on my Instagram. Awesome. Um, probably probably would the 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 best way to get a good response from me uh, is just the Paid Traffic Vault. You know, I answer all the questions I, there. I was gonna say uh, it's crazy, man. I don't know how you do it because. Uh, in the paid traffic vault, there's lots of members in there and they tag Mike and say, Mike, I got a question about blah, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And this guy goes in there within sometimes minutes and he replies thoroughly. So definitely join the group. I'm in there. I love reading the post paid traffic vault and you know how to get a hold of Mike. Mike, thank you so much for being here, man. You are absolutely awesome. Thank you for all the knowledge you bestowed upon us at here at Learn Nation. Listen, all you fighting entrepreneurs, what are you doing? Go to learn.com, L-U-R-N.com. Make sure you sign up and get your free account. We got lots of amazing courses. We're gonna have Mike in there soon as well. And make sure you join our movement. We're gonna put 10 million entrepreneurs into one platform. Do you wanna be a part of the movement that changes the world fundamentally? Or do you wanna stand by on the sidelines and watch us walk right by you? You wanna be a part of it, I know. Go to L-U-R-N.com. And please listen, if you're watching this on YouTube, boom, right below, subscribe, leave me a comment, click the bell icon, click the subscribe icon. I don't know. Just click everything you can. Tell everybody you know about this episode. Say hi to Mike and thank him for taking time out of his life, his business, his family to be here and to give us this amazing, amazing information. And if you're listening to us on the audio version of this podcast on your favorite platform, please be sure to subscribe to us and leave us a great five-star review and tell everybody you can about The Fighting Entrepreneur, where we come together and help entrepreneurs make their dreams come true. So until next time, fighting entrepreneurs, go out there, fight hard, make your dreams come true. This is Onyx Singal. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for listening to The Fighting Entrepreneur with your host, Onyx Singal.